So this is lesson five in the iOS learning path, and this lesson is going to be a discussion about control flow. When I say control flow, I mean how do we know as developers when our code will run? So I've got a couple of Xcode projects here open. I've got our project that we've been working on up to this point, the Monterey Harbor project that we wrote by hand. And then I've also got behind it running the Monterey Harbor project that we downloaded from our source, um, from our BuzzTouch control panel. So we're going to start with the one that we wrote by hand because it's not full of as much code and it's a little bit easier to understand for a moment. We're going to talk about this concept of flow. So the concept of flow might be a little bit tough to get your head around, but try to think of it this way. Everything is going to start in your program logic. Everything is going to start with firing iOS firing a particular method and then in that method your program is going to execute line by line by line by line unless your code instructs the program to jump to another method or alter the program flow. So another way to say that is, is code starts at the top or iOS starts at the top and reads your code down until some of your code jumps to another method. So for example if we had a pretend method called um, I don't know, do something else. And we wrote a simple method like this and do something else did something cool or useful. In this method right here, in the view did load method, we might execute some code, then execute some more code, then execute some more code, and then we might do something else. And then after this method executes, which would be the code inside of this method, everything else down here would continue to execute. So the reason that that's important to understand is because the length of time that it takes to run this, this new method, this do something else method, or the length of time that it takes to jump from here to here and then back may be important. The, the concept here though is, is the flow, the control jumps from here down to here and then however many lines of, of code need to execute here and then it will jump back to or return back to here. So the, the thing about iOS is, is for new developers to try to get their, um, their head under, around the idea that all iOS is doing is executing code after code after code or method after method after method in the order that the developer chooses for that code to be to be executed in. Now that doesn't mean that you're not going to have method calls, that's what we call these um, flow, the, the code that alters the flow. These method calls uh, might be quite long and you might have methods that take a very, very long time. Now the, the good developers and professional developers understand that the user experience is very, very important. So what they wouldn't do is ask iOS to execute a real long running method say um, without showing a progress indicator or they wouldn't op, um, they wouldn't do a really long method say in the view did load section of their code because they recognize that they want the screen to load right away they want this method to finish right away and display something on the screen and then probably wait for a user action before executing something longer so generally speaking what you want to do is you want to do a lot of your fast executing code and a lot of your setup code in the view did load method and then wait for some user interaction. So an example might be, um, you know, you set up your view, you add a web view, then maybe you add a button, and then when the button is clicked, you might add, um, execute a method, execute a method when button is clicked. And so you would set up your button to fire off a method only when the user tapped the button. So you might write a custom method called uh, my button click that goes out to the internet and downloads some song and it might take a few minutes. And so inside the my button click, you might call um, show progress, which happens to be another method, show progress that shows a spinning wheel or something like that. So you would show progress. I got a typo here. Then you would um, download song, which might be a method itself. So you would have another method called download song. 
And then after you're done downloading the song, you might have a method called hide progress. So the concept is hide progress. So we would have to have a couple of different methods, several different methods in this case, to accomplish what we are trying to accomplish. So the first thing that would execute would be um, the button click that you would, or the button tap that you would capture by the user. That would fire this method, which in turn would fire this method, then this method, then this method. So it's a series, so what iOS is, is a series of methods that are firing in a particular order that the developer decided. So what we're talking about when we use the word control flow is the way that iOS jumps around from method to method to method. So we've already discussed and talked about the idea that our application always begins in the did finish launching with options method. So this code inside this method will always run every time your application launches. And so from that point on, the, developers, um, the developer is the person who controls what happens. And so usually in the did finish launching with options method, the control, um, this method op, uh, fires very fast and it sets up a new root controller, a root view controller. And then that root view controller takes over from there and sets up the interface and adds things to the screen, controls and things like that, user interface elements. And it usually does that in the view did load and it does that real quickly. And then it begins to wait for the user to interact. And every time the user interacts, with a shake or a button tap or a, um, a scroll of a menu or something like that, the application then reacts and the application then um, fires or launches a method that the developer wrote like scroll menu or download song or something like that. So flow refers to the order in which iOS executes our code. In the next lesson what we'll do is we'll talk about how the buzz touch um, source code that you get from your control panel helps us understand the order of those events and how that flow is happening to help us um, try to learn and improve and of course create our own applications um, a little bit more successfully. So until next time, happy app making.